In the last few videos, we have been looking at bivectors, which we've been thinking of as oriented plane segments. Until now. Our focus so far has been on bivectors in two and three dimensions, but what about higher dimensional bivectors? That is what we will look at in this video, where everything we thought we knew about bivectors will come crashing down. This video is a part of From Zero to Geo, a series where we formulate geometric algebra, an incredibly powerful branch of mathematics, from the ground up. So how can we even think about higher dimensional bivectors? Well, the idea of an oriented plane segment doesn't really depend on the dimension. All we need is a plane, an orientation, and a magnitude. Even if we can't visualize planes in four-dimensional space, we can still describe them algebraically. For example, in the last video, I talked about how we can describe 3D bivectors using a basis consisting of three bivectors, E12, E13, and E23. We built this basis from the standard 3D vector basis, which also happens to have three elements. We can do the same thing in four dimensions. In four dimensions, we have four basis vectors to build our bivector basis from. There are six ways to pick two things from four things, so we have six basis bivectors in four dimensional space. We can describe 4D bivectors using the algebraically six dimensional space spanned by these six basis bivectors. So you may be wondering, why did I say that everything we knew about bivectors will come crashing down? The answer is addition. Think about how we add bivectors in 3D. We look at the plane that each bivector lives in, find the common line between the two planes, and match the bivectors up along that line. Upon doing this, the rest of the process is straightforward. However, this argument hinges on the ability to find the common line between two planes. Do two arbitrary planes always share a line like this? In three dimensions, it is the case that two non-parallel planes always meet in a single line, but this is actually a quirk of three dimensions. It is no longer true once we go up to higher dimensions. For an explicit example, think of the bivectors E12 and E34. It's hard to visualize both of them at the same time, so I won't bother trying, but notice that these two bivectors are completely independent from each other. The two planes do not share a line at all, so the process we use to add 3D bivectors can't work here. But surely there's some way to add E12 and E34 to produce another oriented plane segment, right? Well, let's try. Every plane can be described using two vectors that span the plane. When it comes to bivectors, we usually think of these vectors as being two vectors making up a parallelogram. So we need to find two vectors such that their span is the plane that E12 plus E34 would be in. Before I work through this, try to do it yourself first. Without spoiling too much, this is a very difficult problem, but I think it would be beneficial to give it your best shot. Please pause the video and see if you can solve this before continuing. So how can we even try to solve a four-dimensional problem? Well, one common way of solving higher dimensional problems is to consider only particular dimensions at a time. For example, let's forget about the E4 direction and consider the three-dimensional subspace containing only E1, E2, and E3 for the moment. To be clear, we're not switching to a three-dimensional problem here. Rather, we are viewing a four-dimensional problem from the perspective of just three of the dimensions. The fourth dimension will still be here. It just won't be present in these pictures and will not affect the argument for now. Practically, this means that we will only be looking at the E1, E2, and E3 components of the vectors involved. Furthermore, the only basis by vectors that we will see in this view are E12, E13, and E23. The other three by vector components will not be visible. So we initially were trying to find two four-dimensional vectors that span the plane given by the bivector E12 plus E34, but now we are just looking at two three-dimensional vectors spanning E12. Again, the other components are still there, but they won't affect our arguments in this subspace because of linear independence. In this view, the bivector is just E12 and doesn't go in the E3 direction at all. If either of the vectors went in the E3 direction, this would cause the bivector to go in the E3 direction as well, which we know is impossible, so both of the vectors must not go in the E3 direction at all. This means that the E3 components of the vectors must be zero. But interestingly, there are other three-dimensional subspaces that we could be considering. Instead of looking at E1, E2, and E3, we could look at E1, E2, and E4. 
Again, from this view, the by vector is just e12, so it can't go in the e4 direction, so the e4 components of the vectors must be zero as well. We could also look at the three-dimensional subspace containing e1, e3, and e4. Things flip around a bit here, and the visible part of the by vector is now e3, 4, and must not go in the e1 direction at all. By the same arguments as before, this means that the e1 component of the vectors must be zero. Finally, we can look at the subspace containing e2, e3, and e4, and by the same argument, the e2 components of the vectors must be zero. Wait a minute. This means that both of the vectors are just zero. But two copies of the zero vector can't possibly span e12 plus e34. We have arrived at something preposterous. So what's going on? In math, when you come to a preposterous conclusion, it means that one of your assumptions was wrong. This whole argument stemmed from one simple assumption, that e12 plus e34 is an oriented plane segment. Thus, this assumption must be wrong, so e12 plus e34 can't be an oriented plane segment. But then what is e12 plus e34? Aren't bivectors oriented plane segments? Is e12 plus e34 not a bivector? Or maybe it's just impossible to add them? Well, first of all, saying that you can add some things but not other things is really annoying. It breaks a lot of algebra and makes computations much more difficult. Thus, we do say that you can still add them. Furthermore, adding two objects of the same type should produce another object of the same type, so we say that e12 plus e34 is a bivector. This means that contrary to what we have been saying until now, bivectors are not oriented plane segments. But then what is a bivector? Well, let's go back to that algebraic way of thinking of four-dimensional bivectors. We thought of them algebraically as just being represented by six spaces bivectors. For a more concrete definition of bivectors, we can just say that bivectors are the linear space spanned by these basis bivectors. In fact, each of these basis bivectors is an oriented plane segment, so we can also think of bivectors as the span of all oriented plane segments. This is nicer than using the span of a particular basis because it is closer to our original conception of bivectors, and in general we want to avoid the use of bases as much as possible. So this will be our true definition of bivectors, the span of all oriented plane segments. But wait, this is geometric algebra. We still don't have a way to think of the sum of e12 and e34 geometrically. While it is a bit annoying, this sum doesn't have any concrete geometric picture, at least for now. I see it as being similar to how we add a scalar and a vector. We just say we can and manipulate it algebraically. There is a geometric way to consider this sum, but we won't be able to cover it until chapter 3. But then what about the bivectors that are oriented plane segments? They're more special than the bivectors that aren't, so we should come up with terminology to describe them. Well, oriented plane segments are flat objects, while general bivectors are not necessarily flat like this. Because of this picture of oriented plane segments being flat, any bivector that is an oriented plane segment is called a blade. In fact, we say that more than just oriented plane segments are blades. We say that all oriented flat geometric objects are blades, so all vectors are blades as well. In fact, we usually include scalars in the definition of blade too. So of the objects we have studied up to this point, scalars, vectors, and some bivectors are blades. But anytime we add two different blades that don't mesh well, we get something that is not a blade. So while 3, 2e1 plus e2, and e12 plus e23 are all blades, 4 plus e1 and e12 plus e34 are not. If we want to talk about blades of a particular dimension, we will say things like one blade for vectors and two blade for bivectors. Now I would like to make an exercise here asking you to determine if several different things are blades or not, but the issue is that it's actually quite difficult to determine in many cases. We will come up with some strategies for solving this problem later, and I'll give some exercises then. Also, another relatively common term to describe bivectors that are blades is simple. So a bivector like e12 plus e23 is simple, but e12 plus e34 is not simple. And like with the blade terminology, we say that all vectors and all scalars are simple. Now, you may think that all is lost because not all bivectors are simple, but thankfully many of the bivectors we actually care about are. All bivectors in two dimensions and three dimensions are simple, and in higher dimensions we often restrict our attention to blades anyway.
you can probably get away with still thinking about bivectors as oriented plane segments, as long as you are aware of when this picture breaks down. And even if bivectors are not always oriented plane segments, the idea of oriented plane segments is still fundamental to the idea of a bivector. We have now covered all of the basics of bivectors. We have seen how they represent oriented plane segments, and also how they don't. We have seen that they form a linear space as well. Given that we have now talked about oriented line segments, which are one-dimensional, and oriented plane segments, which are two-dimensional, could there be generalizations of vectors and bivectors to higher dimensions? That is what we will look at in the next video.